We actually met. We met uh, through a video game. Technically online. Um, at the time, I really had a thing for gamer girls, so. I'm a nerd uh, <laughs> at heart, and I love to play computer games. It was actually through a mutual, mutual friend. friend. That I knew in real life, her name was Melrose, that I played this game with as well. The only reason why I was introduced to Preston was because I wanted to join this guild, and the name of the guild was Aloha. Basically, was told that I needed to fight him. You know, I would fight him one-on-one, -on -one. and basically, I whooped his butt hardcore. Like, hardcore, like, it was like the easiest thing ever. He had to accept me into the clan. He couldn't tell me otherwise. Well, I had no idea how she looked like, so that's why I was um, uh, interested in um, kind of like getting like a Skype call or something. When she first spoke on, on this platform, um, she straight up sounded like a white girl. <laughs> and she doesn't sound like she's from Hawaii. She doesn't sound tail or anything. She has like this really like proper white voice. And I was like, oh, okay. And it kind of caught my interest and I continued to talk to her. And slowly it led up to us texting and eventually we video chatted each other. So, we, so I got to see her. Uh, at the time, uh, MySpace was a big thing. So we exchanged MySpace. Okay, let me check out how this kid looks like. And, but basically, I'm gonna draw a picture for you guys so you can see how he looks like, and then you tell me what your first reactions would be. This is how he looked like in his profile picture. So you could see he has like this over large t-shirt that has multiple stains on it. I forgot to draw a hole, but he had a hole in it too. He was holding like this Heineken bottle and some baggy red pants that had like some nasty stains on it too. I'm like, ew, gross. So me dating a guy that was drinking and partying like that was just like out of the question. I was like, uh, no, not even gonna happen. But I ended up giving him his my phone number um, eventually. And we started talking on the phone. She came down to Hawaii for a period of time. I finally came home on the winter break uh, from school. And then I was like, oh yeah, you wanna meet up or you wanna hang out? And we met for the first time. So, well, she didn't want to give me her address or anything or her home, but so she recommended to meet at a park. She met me at her, the park near her house. And I remember just like seeing her for the first time and I was just like blown away. She was awesome. Like she looked amazing. She was wearing like this jean skirt, uh, sandals and a nice, like a nice blouse on the top. And I don't even, I, I was just nervous. I didn't even know what to say to him, but we ended up like breaking the ice and talking more and so forth. You could tell that she like did her hair and her makeup and all that and it was awesome. The next day I actually ended up flying out to Idaho. So um, yeah, we ended up taking a short break. I'll just, you know, we'll just stay friends and whenever it works out, it works out. When Preston found out that I was coming back home and I was transferring to BYU Hawaii, um, as soon as he found out, he actually gave me a call to reconnect. He had asked me out on a date. At first, I was a little hesitant because we haven't talked for so long. I'm like, but then I ended up just thinking about it. I'm like, okay, sure, why not? You know what? That's fine. So I was like, sure, let's go out on a date. I was kind of nervous. I'm a very nervous and nervous and shy guy. And then he picked me up for the front door, and we started walking. And I'm looking for his truck because he used to drive like this white truck. I see like a compact car and then I see somebody sitting in the driver's seat. I brought a friend with me and it's not your typical day and I know a lot of people are shaking their head right now but it kind of helped make me feel more confident in myself. And I'm thinking to myself like where's your car uh, and who's that? He's like oh um. She kind of went with it. You know, my, my, car, my truck broke down, so I had to ask my friend to pick us up, so he's gonna drive us around and be our chauffeur. And I was just thinking to myself, oh my gosh, you know that one song, No, no Scrubs by TLC? He was literally the guy, the best friend, sitting in, his pass you know, sitting in the passenger side of his best friend's ride. Like, basically was what played in my head when I went out there. I'm like, this is so freaking weird. We go to watch a movie. It's a scary movie, I can't remember. The, the exact movie. And when we get to the movie theater, we're basically greeted with a couple of his friends. I told three other friends that uh, we're going to the movies and they wanted to come, so. And I'm thinking to myself, wait, what? I'm thinking maybe he just ran into them and then ended up finding out that he actually invited them to come on our first date. Now I have three other friends in the same movie theater with us. I was so turned off. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the worst first date ever. I ended up like 
you know, just playing along like, hi, it was so awkward, you know, because I didn't know any of them. And they obviously knew who I was because they were like, oh, is this her? And I'm like, I'm right here. <laughs> so it was kind of awkward. And I just remember like looking back at my friends. Preston, go like that, go like that. Like they're like pretty much coaching me. And I can see them going like this. You know, to like put your arm around her. I mean, that's what we need. That's what boys do, right? So it kind of gave me a little burst of confidence and uh, I went for the move and I put my hands up. Tried to and then failed miserably and put his arms back down. He did that like maybe once more during the movie. And I was like, I couldn't do it. And I think she saw that too. And I was like super embarrassed, but I never really dated before. So it's, everything's all new to me and I appreciate my friends helping me, but it was kind of awkward. I'm very like slow when it comes to things. So I was kind of happy that he didn't take his friend's advice or anything like that. Nothing really special happened that day, but it was uh, very interesting. The first kiss was another interesting moment as well. I asked her, I was like, oh, where's like a good place that we can like hang out or, you know, drive? And she recommended this, this place that you can drive up past her house. We drove all the way up there and I was just like, kind of like psyching myself. I'm like, this is the moment, you know what I mean? This is like, I'm gonna make my move. There's like this forest behind us and he wanted to basically go into the forest. And mind you, it's like pitch black in there. I felt like we were kind of secluded. Like he stopped walking and I, and I kind of turned around and I was just like looking at him like, you okay? And he was just standing there, like he was quiet. Um, just looking at her, uh, gazing into her eyes. And then I grabbed her, I grabbed her. He just put two of his hands on my face, like no hesitation, like out of nowhere, caught me out of the blue. I just looked at her in the eyes and then I started leaning in. Leaned in, like straight gung-ho, like all in. And then she looked at me, she kind of backed a little bit and she looked at me and she was like, what are you doing? He, he was just like, oh, you know what I want to do. I thought I was saying it the most seductive way. I was like, oh, you know what I'm gonna do. And then, gave me a kiss. And then I leaned in for the kiss, like pretty much like, I mean, that's all she wrote after that. <laughs> I was so surprised. I didn't know how to react to it. And I thought it was good. I thought I was like, I did it. I sealed the deal. That was a good kiss. 10 out of 10 for me. It's fine, to be honest. I'll, like the first kiss was probably the worst kiss I've ever had from him. So it got better from there. So that's the good news. Okay, um, so me and Alex, as everyone should know, that we've been together for 10 years, uh, 10 great years in our life, but um, those years weren't um, your typical happy ever after. Um, there's a lot of adversity. Well. I especially had to learn it the hard way. I'm like, when are you gonna pop the question? Like what's happening like with us like wh when are we going to move on to that next stage i had things in my life that i needed to change and quite frankly when i was dating alex i didn't want to change those things um i remember getting married wasn't a thing to me having kids wasn't a thing to me uh, i i really wanted to enjoy life live my life and i felt like like getting married would kind of like stop me from enjoying those things so we had actually broke up because we really needed to find ourselves and I was kind of just more focused on trying to figure out what I wanted in life too because when I started dating him at no fault at him it's just I think I started to drift away because I wanted more freedom and I wanted to like do what he was doing and have you know party and do those kind of things but eventually I realized it's not what I really wanted if it wasn't like, is it, if it wasn't for God and if it wasn't for us, um, especially me um, being baptized and going to church and Alex going back to church. So I remember being in church one day and they were talking about God's triangle. It was almost like it was a revelation in itself because that was when we were going through a hard time. If you picture a triangle, right? God is on top and then, you know, husband and wife is on, is on uh, the opposing corners and as you, focus your lives on our Lord and Savior, then everything will fall into place. We will meet together. As we're getting closer to God, you're getting closer and closer to each other, in a sense. So I thought that was amazing. 
like always hearing that and still to this day it, it's it sticks to me and Alex and going through our trials um, we even went through a we even went through a breakup it kind of like made us analyze our lives and what we want and what we want to do it brought us closer together brought us back to church brought us closer to Jesus I'm so grateful for all the hurdles that we've been through because it made our relationship that much stronger I can honestly say that Preston knows every little detail of my life and I know every little detail about his and yet we still accept each other for who we are. I couldn't ask for anything better. We have um, we have a beautiful house, I have a beautiful wife, we have two foster kids and we want we want our own. We want to have our own one day. Preston, I'm so grateful for you and everything that you are. I can't wait for what the future holds. I'm sure it's going to be a baby or two or maybe a couple more cats or a dog. I'm excited to just experience life with you and I love you. I'm very grateful for Alex. I'm very grateful for everyone who helped me out. I'm very grateful for, for our Lord, Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. And I'm, I'm just grateful for every day that I'm here. And I just want to say that I love you, Alex. and. Thank you so much for being here with me and being in my life. You had changed my life for the better.